I'm just going to mess around with a few things. <coughs> just cheap thrills. So this is the wallpaper and uh, these have all the tasks. Um, and here's the core swap count. <coughs> so uh, I'm going to while true yield. So right now I have um, core zero doing four four and a half million um, swaps a second. That's not. Uh, <coughs> I have to explain what a swap is. Um, it's a context save and a context restore. So if you go to the uh, uh, scheduler. scheduler um, a context save is uh, it it redirects it's not using the normal stack it's just using that as a uh, pre decrement and store anyway it stores the registers in um, in the task record The task record has a, <clears throat> a space for all the registers somewhere in here. Where'd it go? Where did all the registers? There they are. There's all the registers. <clears throat> so the task record is pointed to by uh, FS is the task record, and uh, if you look on your window up here where it says 7F9 that's the um, task record address so FS is the task record so if I say uh, <coughs> I just changed this trace okay so <coughs> Whenever you see FS, it's the FS segment register. Basically, it's used like a general purpose register, um, but it, it's a segment register. It's really hard to use, and the only thing it's good for is uh, it. Um, it's an extra register that uh, makes it convenient. Anyway, uh, so. I'm going to talk about, uh, let's see, so we got four, four and a half uh, million swaps a second. Let's put it on multi-core. So let's just show, <coughs> I'm going to make this not recoverable. Oh, what the heck? No, no, uh, my job. And these typically have a, so I'm going to make a, uh, Yield. <coughs> this uh, saves the context and the scheduler loads the next one. So I64I 4I equal I guess we do 0I less than M multiprocessor count. That's 8. If you look in the, in the, in the top it's got 8 CPU loads. <coughs> And we're going to, we're not going to spawn, we're not going to spawn a task. Oh, we're going to clobber the, why don't we spawn? Let's spawn. That's better. Uh, it would work either way. Hopefully. Uh, it doesn't matter. That's the name that appears on the wallpaper in other places and now we want the processor so we want so in Temple OS you put the task right on the core and the scheduler does not move it between cores so um, all the tasks all the all the applications run on core 0 and if they need extra processing power they fire up some slaves on the other cores so uh, 
let's watch the fireworks when we run it here we go pow okay shucks okay so we got a bunch of tasks oh no oh don't do that to me okay so um <clears throat> i didn't think we could get four and a half million on all cores they um they have to use the same memory buses for <sighs> well they have cash what now what is it doing right now it's loading in and saving those uh those uh registers into the task record um <clears throat> uh so anyway that's quite a lot of uh swaps per second that's I don't have a, uh, a uh, I don't mess with memory maps. I don't mess with page tables. So um, uh, I mine is really fast. All I have to do is store about. Well, you saw. Let's just say there's about 40 instructions, and if it's three gigahertz, this is what you got. I have a couple locks. Locks are slow. Anyway, so. Uh, it's really hard to get out of what we just did. I should I could have put a flag to self-destruct. I just rebooted. Okay. So by the way, to reboot, RAM reboot, and then you tell kernel bin C and this bypasses the uh, BIOS diagnostics. What this does is it loads the I call this a soft boot. Basically, it uh, it uh, we have an operating system that can get fragmented, and uh, we like the ability to do a reboot to reset everything. It's not what you typically think of a reboot. I guess it is. Anyway, this one um, bypasses the hardware reset, and it just what it does is it puts the kernel in place and uh, and resets and, and starts executing so that it's reset anyway. Pow. So um, there is a debugger. Uh, you can hit Control Alt D if you feel like it, or you can say debug. Let's go ahead and uh, somebody wants to know. How to use breakpoints. Am I right? A lot of you have a hard on for breakpoints. So, if you really want to use them, they are available. God help you. Okay, so how do we use them? Here is the problem. We have a task that is in the editor. You have to keep track of where tasks are created and destroyed. We're in the editor. As a matter of fact, do you see this uh, this edit and terminal along the side of the window? That means the task started as a terminal and then it entered the editor. Now we exit. So as a matter of fact, now it's the terminal. And what happened when Behind the scenes, it did an edit. <clears throat> and then if we hit F1, it's deeper. There's another edit. And then if you go back, it... Okay. So, to execute this program, um, we... Uh, <clears throat> We include <clears throat> okay so it printed a million <clears throat> now it's uh, so the question is uh, what is the situation of tasks 
So this is this is all the tasks. Mostly it's just the uh, executive Seth task on each core, and then there's about four on uh, core zero. Core zero is the only core that can have Windows task rip. So uh, here's the situation. We have a uh, executive Seth task. Seth is the son of Adam, and and then on core zero we have we have these two windows there's one there's one window per task maximum there's one heap per task no that's not that's not true is no there's a data in a code heap anyway uh so only core zero can have applications they can create slave tasks on the other cores anyway so uh on core zero we have the window manager and 30 times a second it redraws everything on the screen we're only using a few percent CPU there's the autocomplete which is uh, it's not killed but it's turn the windows turned off uh, oh there's the autocomplete or I could have turned it off before I did the command I don't know and then there's two uh, terminals there's this terminal and this terminal those are user terminals oh I forgot and then there's the Atom task Atom is an executive on core zero I call it Seth on the other ones but it's oh well Atom is the father of all tasks that's why these are indented to show their children of Atom anyway so uh, so in order to debug you have to understand how tasks work and uh, each task has a uh, task record on, off the FS segment register and um, so if I uh, if I include this program it's going to store the code in memory and then it's going to execute it and it's the same task now if I enter the debugger um, the question is what registers are you using when you are in the debugger that's a good question isn't it so if I say debug I wanted the same command line but it's just not windows there's not it's not windowed so you still everything's the same it has a compiler when you make a debugger you want to scale back on uh, on uh, you don't want interference from interrupts so you, you don't you don't want it interrupt driven um, <coughs> that's if it's a low-level debugger Every, you guys are probably used to uh, um, we're at a lower level on the system than you're used to we don't have such uh, glamorous things as uh, what you're used to. Anyway, so at this point, we this is the same task. I think we can get out. Gee, there's a help. Uh, I, I really don't use this. I don't recommend using this. But some people are stubborn and they want to do it the old fat the way they're used to anyway so um, the, here's the problem the first problem is what registers where are the register when we take a task and enter the debugger I can say FS RIP and this is the RIP that was last uh, stored the last time we swapped out now if we happen to do a yield then it overwrites all the registers if you happen to call a command that yields the CPU and lets a swap take place then all your debugging just got hosed so uh, now there is ali there is little aliases I think it's underscore RIP um, I made uh, underscore RAX uh, 
all these are is uh, defines for that's all they are FSREX so uh, you can edit there's there's a handy thing edit there's a, a light editor ed light um, there's you can edit a sim a source address long as, oh, you'll see edit RIP this jumps to the source code and we are in debug okay I didn't know where we were so when we entered debug that was the uh, that's what got stored into the task record remember FS is the current task record so the main difficulty with the debugger is keeping track of the set of registers if you don't uh, FS if you dump enough you'll see the registers uh, class rep FS so the registers will appear somewhere there they are there's the registers so they're they're stored on the record so uh, these these numbers are 16 digits most of them are eight digits but in theory you have to enter 16 digit numbers that is no fun and the worst part is you don't have screen real estate in order to do anything I made a, uh, a little IDE that had a watch window and uh, it had a uh, it pulled up source code alongside the uh, what I tried to do is have two windows one for the, uh, the the program being executed another for the source code and uh, it was a nightmare so I, I have on my website the the uh, remains of a uh, IDE it, it, it would need some work anyway um, <coughs> integrated development environment so apparently we have some uh, recurse recursive uh, it's printing out the neighbors of the task the children or something class rep prints um, so many layers deep uh, so the task has a uh, a uh, successor and when we did the class rep where we are now seeing what the successor was I think we're going to abort this how do I do that I don't know. okay there's no way there's no interrupts I just have to reset it okay so if you want to set breakpoints I just want to show that it is possible so first of all we don't want to execute the program yet okay let's include this let's debug let's unassemble function main let's set a breakpoint for address main plus 0x uh, let's do the print right on the print 1c okay you can see how this works now we say uh, now you have to keep track of you have to keep in your head where what registers are what there, there's a set of registers that that are doing the command line and then there's a set of registers that are in the uh, the current task record we haven't every time we swap in and out they get updated um, when we change tasks anyway uh, if I say main so uh, I don't know I guess we're at the right there's the unassembled instruction now you can single step but you have to step over the breakpoint first I think yeah so you have to disable the breakpoint I could do this again go let's say go 
I don't know if that's going to skip. I think we have to single step over the break point. Otherwise, it'll go. Okay. It gives us warning. Single step. So you have to single step over the break point. And then you say go. And then we get back to the break point. It's in a loop. So it's kind of ghetto. Let's look at the warning again. So, uh, so we can single step all day. Single step. Let's see. Let's unassemble. Unassemble. Watch what I do. Unassemble. R I underscore R I P. So uh, we're getting some dollar sign commands. Push. Push B P. Okay, so we stepped into the print. That's where we are. And we can single step. It should let us single step. We're single stepping our way through the function. Now, uh, let's let it rip. Go. And we're back at the break point. We can get rid of the break point. Uh, let's just hit go to hit G2. This removes the breakpoints and goes. Oh no. You know what? Oh, it's not going to... Okay, so the uh, the normal window manager uh, only updates 30 times a second. This is updating every single line. So as a matter of fact, we cheat normally because we we uh, we don't we don't show all the intermediate line numbers <clears throat> okay I don't feel like this is taking too long so uh, I just proved that you can do breakpoints if you really want to uh, I'm really uh, lost when it comes to uh, When we're in this situation, I don't know all the places where there are yields at the com So when you're doing directory, I, I think there's a yield if you do a directory. I'm guessing. So I don't know for a fact. If there were a, a, a if you happen to do a directory in the middle of debugging, it would overwrite your task record registers. And now what? Anyway, so um, if you have suggestions for how we can improve debugging, first of all, we don't have real estate. We don't have screen real estate. It's, it's, it's always going to suck. So the best thing is uh, I, have some, I have some really nice... If you say raw, raw print, then you say, let's say 2000, hello. That's not what I wanted to do. I forgot how it works. Raw print, milliseconds format. Oh, that's correct. Something's broken, is it? Oh, there it is. It's up at the, uh, it was up at the tip top of the screen. This is for a uh, black and white, to use the slang. <laughs> okay, so it's printing hello across the top of the screen. Uh, you'll note it, watch the top of the screen. Okay, so there is a, uh, that is outside the normal window framework. And, uh, so uh, what you can do, normally tasks don't are, I guess you'd call them uh, headless or headerless or something. A lot of tasks don't have a window. And if you want to output from a task that doesn't have a window, you can use raw print. You give it milliseconds to stay there. This just locks the system and uh, displays a message. So when you're doing multitasking, here's another reason uh, debugging is uh, doesn't work real well. 
with Temple OS. When we do our games, um, let's go to our games directory. Uh, all the games uh, work with a uh, FS a draw it a draw it callback. So uh, what that means is there's one task that's doing this uh, it's getting key that's getting keys and responding to keys and there's another task which is drawing the screen the window manager up calls this code now one of the first problems is uh, when you're debugging you need to set your uh, your hash table for symbols if you want symbolic debugging uh, let me give you an example uh, let's say we want to debug uh, let's do that let's do that okay let's say we want to debug the the draw the for some perverse re reason we want a single step this draw it okay so uh, here's what we do let's do that it's a dry it um, I'm gonna comment this out hit F5 okay so this is the task right now the code is in memory and uh, we're waiting to do Wenceslas now the deep the uh, the window manager, we want to set a breakpoint in the window manager task. As a matter of fact, uh, breakpoints are owned by the task. They're removed and inserted. So we cannot set a breakpoint for the window manager. What if we just... Okay, Temple OS, you can do anything. Um... So you know what we're going to do? The opcode for a breakpoint is CC. So uh, what we are going to do is we're going to say uh, unassemble function. Oh, I just ruined the surprise. Okay, well let's. No, I didn't ruin it. So here's it's a long function and it prints sprites and damn that's a huge function. I think it's the data. Okay, the data for the meshes is uh, actually um, after the function. Let's un let's just unassemble. Okay, so here we are. Let's go to the pen width. Okay, so we are going pen width equals one. Let's put a let's put a breakpoint there. So here's what we do. So the symbol table is each task has a symbol table, and all tasks inherit symbols of parents. Um, you know what we're gonna do? Uh, let's uh, let's say uh, okay, we'll be a wimp. U8 star B equals address draw it plus zero X. We want the uh, pen width 4D star B equals zero X CC. Okay. We just put a breakpoint instruction by hand. Now when we run this, it's going to crash when the window manager calls it. Now let's plan ahead. And uh, what we're going to do, we're going to tell Adam to compile some code. Adam is the father of all tasks. 
all, we inherit everything Adam has. So uh, I'm going to say, uh, let's just call it an I-64. I-64 uh, saved uh, oh, this is tricky. Okay. Say, let's just call it saved. Um, equals FS hash table. Okay, this is the symbol table for the current task. This has the the uh, the name of dry it. If we want to see what's in the symbol table for the current task, we say who minus, oh god, I hope this is correct. I better do little r. Okay, so those are all the symbols when we compiled that code. There's dry it. Anyway, so we, we, we want to display the hash table. Let's go ahead and store that into... We're going to create a variable inside the atom task. We're, I'm just planning ahead. So we stored the hash table address. And now, now the problem is the window manager, when it hits that breakpoint, if we unassemble, it's not going to have the draw it in its symbol table. And the unassemble will not show the symbolic name. It doesn't scan all tasks. I, I thought about that. Anyway, each this is a single address map. However, you only have symbols for your current task and parents. Um, I could scan all tasks went for symbolic debugging. Anyway, so we go debug. No, no, no. We, we say uh, Wenceslas, and then it's going to hit that breakpoint. I was getting worried. Okay, now it says interrupt three, and we don't have symbolic debugging. Now we, now uh, what we do is uh, we say fs hash table. This totally hoses it. Well, no, I don't know about totally. Saved. And now if we say, oh, look at that. You see it says, now it says dry at 4D. So now it knows what uh, unassemble function. Oh, we're not, we remember it's a really long function. Dry it. Long story short, now we have symbolic debugging. The reason we had to do that is because it's a different task. So I don't know what to tell you. If you want to use breakpoints and you want to use the debugger, uh, you're nuts. But what I recommend, to be quite honest, is I mean, I, uh -oh. um, I do a lot of. Uh, I do. I make a lot of use of. Uh, see these progress one, two, three, four. Um, what I do when I'm in the middle of something, I'll just say progress. Progress one equals uh, king milliseconds, and then I hit F5, and then uh, what'll happen is it'll write to the progress variable and then I can see it then I can see it or I'll, I'll, I'll use it if progress one it's just a global variable if progress one is greater than a hundred progress one plus plus beep I use sometimes I use beep I use beep there's a beep that uh, that blocks this one does interrupts but if you say uh, 500 comma true then that doesn't use interrupts. That turns off interrupts. Anyway, uh, and uh, you might put a, uh, you can 
put a raw print. I don't use this, it's a little too much typing. But this is a printf, so you can say percent %x. You can say percent %p. And if that hash table off your task is, that's what it uses, the hash table off your task. And if you want to see what's in your hash table, who, I, I, I never use this, because I, you know, I always know. This tells who's in your hash table. And I'm going to see if I, when a surgeon checks for sponges, I do a merge check all the time. I just, I have my, my D drive is an exact copy of my C drive. And throughout the, throughout the day, I'll update it. And, uh, and then I like to do a difference, a merge check. <clears throat> you can check my files on the distribution in the demo account directory. You can find my personal menu. And on my personal menu is my merge that uh, you can play with it in a virtual machine with nothing too important. Anyway, so how about that?